So guys, let's talk about the retinaculums, the flexor, extensor and the peroneal retinaculum and we'll see how these tendons and blood vessels from the leg are reaching the foot. So first in the lot, we have a flexor retinaculum. Now flexor retina, unlike uh, when you, if you remember the wrist part where we have the flexor and extensor retinaculum, pretty simple one on the plant, uh, on the, the palmar aspect and one on the dorsal aspect. Now it's not exactly the same way we have in the foot because we have three compartment muscle going down. So extensor retinaculum is the very conventional because it is present on the dorsum surface. So that is extensor retinaculum. But when, when it comes to flexor and extens, uh, flexor retinaculum as well as the peroneal retinaculum, they are present more toward the medial side and lateral side. Flexor retinaculum is situated more on the medial side as you said. So we can say it's more on the medial and posterior, posterior medial aspect it is. To understand the flexor retinaculum, I first draw this schematic picture with you. So let us say this here is the medial mellulus. So let's say you're seeing it from the medial side, it's a tibia bone, so it is medial mellulus here. And then we have all the bones in like the talus, the, the, the navicular, and let's say this is the first metatarsal. And here is the calcaneum bone. There's a calcaneum. So I'm just first bothered about these two. This here is the medial mellulus. And there is the calcaneum. So the extension of the flexor retinaculum is not on the plantar surface. It is more on the medial side or you can say posterior medial side here. So flexor retinaculum will be seen extending from the medial mellulus to the medial surface of the calcaneum. Look at that. It is going from the from here to here. Let me just highlight this part. This here is the location for the flexor retinaculum. So first thing is the attachment from the medial mellulus to the medial surface of calcaneum is the attachment of flexor retinaculum. Then the main question here is that how the structures are arranged deep to the flexor retinaculum. So when we go from medial to lateral, the arrangement of the structures deep to the flexor retinaculum can be remembered with the mnemonic here. So let me go with the mnemonic first and then we'll write about it. The mnemonic says that Tom, Dick and Harry, Tom, Dick and Harry. Easy to remember the Tom, Dick and Harry. So that in Tom, this T reminds me of the muscle that is <clears throat> TBLS posterior. The T reminds me of TBLS posterior. D, Tom, Dick and Harry. D, D reminds me of the muscle digitorum. So obviously it's a flexor retinaculum. So it's a flexor digitorum. So we have muscle that is flexor digitorum longus. So D is for digitorum, digitorum longus. Then and A and N, A and N here reminds me of both artery and nerve. So this is for the artery and this is for the nerve. Now what artery and what nerve we're expecting to see here? Now guys, what nerve will you see? What is the nerve that is coming from the posterior compartment? That is tibial nerve. So nerve has to be the tibial nerve and artery is a posterior tibial artery. So just simply remember artery and nerve in that sequence only. First artery, then nerve from medial to lateral. And H is the hairy, it is for the Hallucis, that is flexor hallucis longus. That is flexor hallucis longus. So knowing the mnemonic will help remember the arrangement of the structure deep to the flexor retinaculum from medial to lateral. From medial to lateral. This is all going from, you can say slightly from anterior to posterior or you can say it is going from medial to lateral. Medial to lateral or anterior to posterior. So first was what TBL is posterior. So let me just draw it for you. So we said guys, tendon of TBLS posterior will be like this, going deep to it. And that is TBLS posterior tendon. TBLS posterior attaches to the navicular tuberosity region. That is, that is where TBLS posterior. Then we have flexor digitorum longus. The next one here will be the flexor digitorum longus. A and artery and nerve. Artery, what artery? posterior tibial artery which will divide into the the plantar arteries later nerve is the posterior tibial or simply tibial nerve which will divide into the medial and lateral plantar nerve and h here is for the the hallucis that is flexor hallucis longus flexor hallucis longus let me label it in that manner only so we said this is tbl is posterior this here is the flexor digitorum longus. 
we got the artery let me write the name of the artery here this time what artery guys this is the the posterior tibial artery that's a posterior tibial artery nerve the nerve is the tibial nerve itself which is going to divide deep to the retinoculum into the median and lateral plantar nerve and then we have tendon of flexor hallucis longus that is how the structures are arranged in the flexor retinoculum from medial to lateral or you can say they slightly go from anterior to posterior so the one which is more anterior is most medial also so most anterior medial to posterior lateral we can say that's how the structures are arranged deep to flexor retinoculum let me show you the picture to uh, in the atlas to correlate uh, the only thing is that picture that i'm going to show in the atlas is the mirror image that is of the of the other foot this is a picture for the for the uh, let's say for the right foot but the image that i'll show you for is for the left one so if you compare this picture with this one see i've just already labeled these things can you see the flexor retinoculum attaching to the medial medullus there to the tibial medullus and it is here it is attached to the medial surface of the medial surface of the calcaneum so that is the retinoculum right and if you look at the structures highlighted there starting from the tibial is posterior that is the tibial is posterior tendon the next one is flexor digitorum longus the tom dick artery nerve then you have artery the posterior tibial artery the nerve what is nerve that is the tibial nerve so artery and nerve are there and then the most posteriorly or you can say the most laterally in this group is the flexor hallucis longus arrangement of the structure deep to the flexor retinoculum it's all about knowing their arrangement how they are in the next one we have is the extensor retinoculum now extensor retinoculum is the one which we have to discuss more because it's not single we have a double band we have two bands for the extensor retinoculum so how extensor retinoculum will look like let me just once again draw it for you and then we'll see compare it with the atlas image so we said we got two bands of the extensor retinoculum we got a superior band we have one superior band and we got one inferior band and this inferior band is actually y shaped we'll show it to you so we got a superior and the inferior band and the inferior band is more like a y shaped here well to understand this let let me draw a little di small diagram here let us say this here is the fibula bone let's say if this is the lateral side so here is the fibula and there we go this is a tibia right so this has the fibula and that is a tibia needless to that is a lateral side this is medial side okay now when you look talk about the superior band and the inferior band the superior band of this retinoculum is extending from the anterior surface of the fibula to the anterior surface of the tibia obviously in the lower part so anterior border not the surface actually the border anterior border of the fibula to the anterior border of the tibia like this this band here is the superior band so remember what we said upper band or superior band is from the anterior border of fibula to the anterior border of tibia in the lower part of course the inferior band is the one you have to remember inferior band is y shaped and the stem of that y is toward the lateral side that stem of that y is toward the lateral side so what you will see the stem of the y is coming from the non articular part of the calcaneum bone so it is coming from below actually so it is coming from non articular part of the calcaneum bone and then it divides into two one is the one band goes above like this and one band will go below in this manner the band that is going above as you can clearly see it is attached to the medial medullus i will write that for you is attached to the medial medullus this one the upper band uh, the the upper division of this y shaped lower band and the lower division of this y shaped band is going toward the plantar aponeurosis this will go and attach to the plantar aponeurosis so this will turn downward and go toward the plantar aponeurosis so the two bands guys this is the upper band and lower band so it's better if i write it down for you as well upper band and as you see it is extending from the anterior tibial border to anterior fibular border that's the extension of the upper band lower band being y shaped so this is a stem of the y this is a stem that's what we call it the stem of the y 
and the stem of the Y shaped lower band is attached to the non articular part of calcaneum. Non articular part of calcaneum. The two division, this division of the stem above is attached to the medial mellulus. Medial mellulus. And this lower one is attached to the plantar aponeurosis. We'll look into this what is plantar aponeurosis in a while. Just like in the palm, we have palmar aponeurosis. So this, this band is basically turning and going toward the plantar aponeurosis. You will have a better orientation when you will see the, uh, the image for this. So that's how the attachment of the extensor retinaculum. Upper band and lower band. Upper band, as you can see, is attached between the borders of the TV and fibula. And lower band is attached to the calcaneum, to the medial mellulus, and to the plantar aponeurosis. Once again, if I look into the mnemonic first, what structures are going through, so it will be easy for us to draw. The mnemonic that will work here for the extensor retinaculum will be, you can remember it, I'll, I'll come back to this picture guys. The mnemonic goes like, tall husbands are not Dear person, no offense to the tall people, tall husbands are not dear people or you can say the Himalayas are not dry places, whatever, I mean there's so many mnemonics for everything, the, Hima the Himalayas are not dry places, whatever. Again, it is going from medial to lateral. This mnemonic is also working from the medial toward the lateral side. So this tall T, this H, this A, this N, this D and P. Let's take this mnemonic. The T here represents the tendon of TBLS. Now this time we are looking at extensor retinaculum. So it has to be the TBLS anterior. Husband, hallucis. This is, and again, it's a extensor retinaculum. So it's extensor hallucis, longus. A and N, again, artery and nerve. So this is for the artery. This is for the nerve. Is what artery? What artery we expect to see on the dorsum of the foot? That is a dorsalis pedis artery. So the artery here will be the dorsalis pedis artery, which is a continuation of anterior tibial artery. So you can say it's an anterior tibial artery continuing as dorsalis pedis artery. Nerve is what? The nerve that you'll see here is a is a deep peroneal nerve. It's an anterior side. So the nerve supplying the anterior compartment of leg is a deep peroneal nerve. Nerve is deep peroneal nerve. D, digitorum, extensor digitorum longus and the P here is for the peroneus tertius, you know that muscle, peroneus tertius here, tibial is anterior extensor, hallucis longus, artery, nerve, digitorum and tertius, peroneus tertius, tall husband and not dear person, that is the mnemonic which can work for the extensor retinaculum from medial to lateral side. Let's represent in the diagram. So going from the medial to lateral side, clearly we know this is the medial side here, so first is this T here, that is a there we go, that is the TBLS anterior tendon. Then we have H, that is hallucis tendon. Artery, that's the artery, anterior tibial artery continuing as dorsalis pedis artery. Nerve, that is the deep peroneal nerve. And finally again, a tendon there. Digitorum and tertius. Going from medial to lateral, let me label it here. This is tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus. I'm just writing A for the artery. This is N for the nerve. Extensor digitorum longus. And most laterally is the peroneus tertius. The arrangement of the structures deep to the extensor retinaculum, passing deep to the upper band and lower band. The attachment of the band is also very important, especially for the first year that you should know the attachment of these bands. And uh, rest, the arrangement is, is important, that how the structures are arranged. <clears throat> so let me compare it with a picture. So. Let's go in there and look into an atlas image and see how this thing will look like. So we saw the flexor retinaculum, 
In this picture, now let me take you to the dorsum of the foot and ankle and there you have the extensor retinoclea. Look at this guys, look at this beautiful picture where you have this upper band, you can see it is attached to the anterior surface of fibula here and that is the anterior surface of tibia. And the lower band as you can see calcaneum, see it is attached on the calcaneum, non-articular part of the calcaneum there. And you can see this up above it is going to where? To the medial medullus. And below it is going downward toward the plantar surface that is toward the plantar aparosis. That was the upper and the lower band of extensor retinaculum. I've already labeled these structures starting from the TBLS anterior. You can, you can see then is we have a tendon of extensor hallucis. The artery is there. Nerve was not shown here. So I've just drew the nerve myself. There is a nerve after that. And then you have this tendon of extensor digitorum longus. And finally, most laterally, we have a peroneus tertius tendon, which you can see is inserted to the base of the fifth metatarsal. So that's how the structures are arranged in the flexor and the extensor retinaculum. You, it's better to remember the mnemonic and that way you can remember that how the structures are organized there. Why this organization is important? Because as we said, there are certain things which you saw in the upper part. They were like different. Uh, the muscle which was supposed to go toward the great toe and the muscle going toward the digits, their location of the muscle belly was different. But by the time they reach downward, especially in the flexor retinaculum, they cross and then they reach the foot. So you should know that how those muscles to be found, uh, are located in the uh, in the leg and then how those tendons are arranged in the flexor retinoclum and ultimately how will they go into the foot which we will see in the next section. And finally the one which we are not, go not going to draw that we simply should know the third retinoclum is for the lateral compartment and that is called as a peroneal retinoclum. Now if I just show you the picture for that look at this guys this here you already know these two muscles here. The muscle here that is a peroneus longus muscle which is present below and going toward the medial side and this one is a peroneus uh, brevis which we saw is attached to the base of the fifth metatarsal. Now we have the two retinaculum here. Again we have a two band of the peroneal retinaculum. We have an upper and the lower band here and it's only the upper band which is having an attachment to the lateral mellulus. Otherwise rest all the attachments are to the lateral surface of calcaneum only. This is lateral mellulus this obviously the calcaneum so only upper band is having one attachment to the lateral mellulus otherwise this rest of all the attachments of upper band as well as lower band of peroneal retinaculum of this peroneal retinaculum is on the lateral surface of calcaneum itself which is holding the tendon of peroneus longus and peroneus brevis we, we need all these retinoculum to keep the tendon in place. See, if there is no flexor or extensor retinoculum in the in the wrist region or in the foot region, what will happen? What uh, is it just to differentiate the tendon from one another? Or we just have to learn up, uh, mug up all these tendons that what, what is the reason? What is the advantage of having these retinoculum? Well, they prevent the bow stringing. There's a word that you should know that is called as a bow stringing. Now, what is a bow stringing, guys? Bow stringing means imagine if there is no flexor retinoclum at the wrist here. So, the tendons like flexor digitorum, uh, flexor digitorum superficialis, flexor digitorum profundus. So, every time you flex the wrist, now there are chances the tendons will pop out and they will pop out and they will be like a string of a bow. Our, our this uh, forearm and the hand will be like a bow and the tendons will be extending in this manner straight like a string of that. We don't want that to happen. Otherwise, muscle will not work effectively on those certain joints. If you keep the muscle or tendon close to the joints, then only they work effectively on that particular joint. That's why the tendons are kept in their position, whether it is upper limb or lower limb, by these retinoculum, so that what can be avoided? The bow stringing of the tendon can be avoided. That's the need of all these flexor, extensor or the peroneal retinoculum. So this was about the arrangement of tendon in the retinoculum. In the next section, we will go into the foot and talk about the sole of the foot as well as the arches, which is a very, very important topic.